Here is an example of using the transformation technique to find the distribution of a continuous random variable y as a function of a continuous random variable x. Find the probability density function and expected value of the volume of a sphere with a random radius that has a unit exponential distribution. Well, the first step is to define the random variable x, and in this particular case, x will be the radius. Could have used r for the radius, but since the theorem uses x, we'll stick with that. Second step is to define the random variable y, which is some function g of the radius. And in this case, since we're looking at the volume of a sphere, the formula will be 4 thirds pi x cubed. So that right there will give us the volume of the sphere. Now at this point, the steps will be numbered as they were in the past. And the first step is to find the support of the random variable x. Well, if this is a radius, then we can only have positive radiuses of a sphere. So this is the set of all x such that x is greater than 0. Step 2 is to find the probability density function of x. Well, it says that the the random radius has a unit exponential distribution. The word unit means it's exponential with a mean or a rate of 1. So in this case, f sub x of x. And don't forget the subscript here because we're going to have two different random variables running around in the problem is e to the minus x. That's the, that's the uh, exponential distribution from back in chapter 5 for x greater than 0. Step 3 will be to determine whether or not there is a one-to-one -one relationship between x and y. If on the support x greater than 0 you plot 4 thirds pi x cubed, that's going to look something like this. Here is x and here is y. So by the vertical line test that is a function and by the horizontal line test, it is a one-to-one -one function. So the answer to this, oops, moving forward here. Let's go back. We'll get to all this later. The answer to this one is yes, y equals g of x is a one-to-one -one function. on the support script A. So once that is determined, step four is to find a, an inverse of that one-to-one -one function. So this will be x equals g inverse of y. I will do this with lowercase x and y this time. And the way you do that is you take this equation up here and you solve it for x. You do that by multiplying both sides by 3 fourths dividing by pi and then taking a cube root and what you get in this case is you get 3y over 4 pi raised to the one-third power. Now in addition we know we're finding that inverse because eventually in the formula we are going to need dx dy and when you take dx dy you get 1 over 4 pi times 3y over 4 pi to the negative 2 thirds power. And so that is the derivative after some simplification. Step 5 then is to find script B. Script B will be the support of the random variable y. Well if x has positive support. When you cube it and multiply by 4 thirds pi, that also has positive support. So script B will be the set of all y such that y is greater than 0.
And that takes us to step six, which in the transformation technique will be simply plugging into the formula that was given in the theorem. So step six looks like this. F sub y of y says you take the PDF for x and you plug in g inverse y as an argument times the absolute value of dx dy. And where that goes in this case is you get e to the minus x power, but instead of minus x, what you're going to get is minus 3y over 4 pi raised to the 1 third power. That's simply plugging in the inverse. And then the absolute value of dx dy will be 1 over 4 pi times 3y over 4 pi raised to the negative 2 thirds power. And there isn't much simplification you can do on that, but you can do a little bit. This will remain the same. 3y over 4 pi raised to the one-third power. But these absolute value bars can be dropped because y is only greater than zero. And when you simplify that on the in inside after dropping those absolute value bars, you get 36 pi y squared all raised to the negative one-third power. And this is on the support y greater than zero. <clears throat> so there is the PDF of y and here is some Apple confirmation that that, in fact, is the correct PDF. You set x to an exponential random variable with a rate of 1. The function g is 4 pi x cubed divided by 3, or 4 thirds pi x cubed. That's defined from 0 to infinity. Then using the transform function, on the random variable x with the transformation g, you get the random variable y, and it'll come back and it will give you this as a probability density function. If you want to take a look at thing, this thing, plot dist y, that'll appear on the next page. And then finally, if you want the mean of this distribution, you can take mean of y. So here's a couple things about the probability density function of y. Because of this y raised to the two-thirds power, I'm sorry, y to the negative two-thirds power, this has a vertical asymptote at y equals zero, has a very heavy right-hand tail. And furthermore, if you look at the population mean, it is the expected value of y is 8 pi or 25.1327. Now this particular distribution is the mean of the radius and that seems a little on the high side. The reason for that is that generally the exponential can generate a very large value and when you cube a large value and then furthermore multiply by 4 thirds pi you're going to get a very large number and so that's to account for those. On the next page you'll see a picture here of the uh, of the probability density function. This tail here is very long so I will write in here there is a heavy tail and in fact it is such a heavy tail that it gives you a mean. The mean is all the way way off the uh, scale here at uh, 25.1. So you can imagine there's got to be a pretty heavy right hand tail in order to get a mean of 25.1. Now if you're nervous about this picture here and the fact that you've got a mean all the way out there at 25.1, you can run a Monte Carlo simulation. And believe it or not, this can be done in one line in R. So this is an R statement right here. And what it does is it generates 100,000 random exponential variates with a mean of 1, the second parameter in RECSP is uh, defaulted. So here are 100,000 random radiuses. When you multiply those by 4 thirds pi and cube them, there you get 100,000 volumes. So this right here gives you 100,000 volumes. When you calculate the mean of those volumes and run this one statement five times, it runs fairly quickly, you get a bunch of numbers here 
which are jumping around our theoretical value of 25.1. So this does indeed support the analytic result.